What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the stocks that it's honestly been quite a while that we touched on this stock, and this is going to be Palantir stock. This is one of the stocks that's been one of the most widely searched and one of the most trending stocks as of the past few months. And it's been a while since I gave an update on this. So this video is going to be all things Palantir. Now, two big things we want to talk about, and this is how we're going to separate this video. The first thing is going to be a big new partnership for Palantir, and that's not going to take too long. We're going to breeze right through that, discuss the new partnership, but then there's going to be a more important topic that I want to touch on. And this is going to be the analysis that I just recently did on Palantir. It's been a while since I did an analysis on this stock, so I figured, hey, you know what, since there has been a couple of things that have changed, management has given some new guidance numbers let's go ahead and update our analysis and this is going to be a quick analysis this is what's called a back of the napkin calculation and then you guys are going to be able to see how much money the company is going to make in the future and what this means for your investment if you're invested in palantir if you're thinking about investing in palantir or if you're even thinking about selling palantir so this video is all things education and finance, and that's what we're going to do. So hopefully by the end of this video, you do learn a lot. And also just be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I know a lot of you guys watching this video aren't necessarily subscribed, so it would be much appreciated if you just go ahead and hit that button. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the first piece of this video, which is going to be the new partnership that Palantir has scored. Palantir and Ringier Extend Digital Transformation Partner. Palantir Technologies Incorporated and Ringier AG today announced they have renewed their strategic partnership to provide Ringier with software to further its digital transformation and accelerate its shift to a digital first global media company. Ringier uses Palantir's Foundry software to harness the power of data in order to better serve and inform readers. By expanding reach and enhancing the relationship to its audience, Ringier is able in turn to increase the revenue needed to fund quality journalism in addition to being used in newsrooms. Ringier also uses Foundry to improve performance in the advertising departments across its media brand. Foundry transforms the way organizations operate by creating a central operating system for their data. It allows for their integration of silo data sources into a common operating picture, leading to better data-driven decisions making across the enterprise. Okay, so we already know from the previous quarter's analysis that as Palantir is signing up these new partnerships, it's definitely making more money because the average revenue per customer is increasing. So that's the trend that we've seen over the past couple of years. Palantir's average revenue for each of these car contracts and partnerships it has with its customers is slowly increasing. And so now with this new partnership as well, we're not exactly sure on the financial details of this yet, but my guess would be that this also does follow the trend. I'm guessing that relative to its old partnership with Ringier, Palantir is able to continue making more and more money as the average revenue per contract goes ahead and increases. And this is great news for Palantir because it's able to expand its European footprint with this partnership. So partnerships like this are, are the ones that you want to see for growing companies. They're still able to increase revenue, maintain good connections and partnerships, while also expanding their geographical footprint. Now, I think that's enough said about the new partnership. Let's go ahead and get on to the more important piece of this video, and that's going to be the entire financial analysis. So there's going to be a lot going on in this financial analysis, and if you have to rewind this a couple times, I 100% suggest you just go ahead and do that. Going right into this analysis, we need to start off using some high-level numbers that the Palantir management provided us from the last quarter's earning. So I'm going to break out my computer because we're going to do very quick math as we walk through this analysis. Let's go ahead and start with the revenue number that Palantir expects to generate. Just to give you a high level overview, what we're going to do is we're going to get to the amount of money that we expect Palantir to make in 2025 based on what management has told us. And this is going to tell us whether or not Palantir stock is expensive or it's cheap right now. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So we already know that as of last year, Palantir came in at $1.1 billion in sales generated. 
Now, the most important piece of this to keep in mind is that Palantir expects to increase this revenue amount by 35% all the way till 2025. But more specifically, the number that they gave us was $4 billion or more by 2025. So that means that the company has came out and said already that they expect to generate $4 billion by 2025. So we already know based on the outlook that Palantir projects that its 2021 revenue will exceed 30% growth year over year and its Q1 2021 revenue, so the quarter that's coming up right now, will grow by 45% year over year. This definitely is going to surpass the company's 35% annualized growth rate that they projected. So pretty much that just means that they're actually growing faster and they're on track to meet their growth targets. Now, one thing to note here is that Palantir also projects that its Q1 2021 adjusted operating margin will rise to 23%. This is going to be lower than the operating margin of 32% in the previous quarter, but it's definitely higher than the average of 17% over 2020. So this is important because if Palantir sales keep growing at a 35% rate and its operating margin rises by 35%, that 35% is just going to be the 23% this quarter divided by the 17% average of last quarter, which is what they reported. That's going to be 35% growth. Now, back to the point here. If their operating margin and sales grow by 35%, this is going to result in a lot of money and a lot of profitability for Palantir. So let's just go ahead and break this down for a second. The two sides to this equation are going to be sales growth and operating profit growth. The sales growth is going to be about 35% is what the management expects. But now you need to understand what operating margin is. Operating margin means that's the amount of money that Palantir makes after they, they get their revenue amount and subtract out all the costs that they have to pay for this revenue. So for example, if they're spending R&D or any other expenses to go ahead and generate this revenue, that all comes out and Palantir is left with operating income, and that's the 23% number that we're currently using. So to get the operating profit, you can take 23% times whatever sales amount Palantir generates, and that's going to be the operating profit. So a quick example here to show you, let's assume that by 2025, Palantir makes 23% on 5 billion in revenue. This means it will make 1.1 billion in adjusted operating profit. In fact, actually, if margins rise to 32%, which was the quarter for 2020 amount, then that's going to be 1.6 billion in operating profit. But then after taking the 25% tax deduction, your net income is going to come in at around $1.2 billion. So to sum this up for you, let's say Palantir is able to hit that that five billion dollar sales amount that they set out to hit in 2025 now let's just also say that they're able to do 32 percent in operating margins which is actually pretty high if they hit this then good for them and so if they hit that 32 percent that's gonna be 1.6 billion dollars in operating profit that the company can generate but now you also got to take taxes out this and that's going to be the money that's left in pure profit. So that's after taxes, this 1.6 billion goes down to about 1.2 billion because we're using about a 25% standard tax rate. So that's 1.2 billion. Now this is where the magic happens. So you know the company is going to be making 1.2 billion dollars, but is that a lot or is that not that much? A lot of you guys might say that's a lot of money, but here's the thing to note. Palantir's market cap currently is already about 40 billion dollars. When you put that in perspective, that that $1.2 billion isn't necessarily a lot of profit. So th you could think about it like this. A company's market cap is essentially how big it currently is. So imagine if, so if I was a multi-billionaire and I had $100 billion, you can essentially look at Palantir as an investment of about $40 billion. If I wanted to buy the whole company right now, I can pay $40 billion and just buy the whole company. But in 2025, I'm expected to generate about $1.2 billion in operating profit. Now, if that's the case, I'm paying $40 billion for $1.2 billion of operating profit. 
that doesn't seem like such an attractive return, especially with some of the returns we've seen nowadays where people are getting 30, 40, 50, even 100% return on their money. This investment doesn't look like it would be that type of return. Now that brings us to the conclusion here. Does it make sense to invest in the company? I think that this analysis and this estimate that we're talking about right now is a bit conservative because Palantir has so many different paths that they can use to make money. Their average revenue per customer is growing significantly. So I think this estimate of $1.2 billion of operating profit in 2025 is definitely on the lower. Now, with that being said, if Palantir does continue to drop down to around $18 to $19, I think at that point, the market cap will drop significantly. I, I believe the math will work out to less than $35 billion. And then the investment might be much more attractive because now you have a company that's generating about $1.2 billion and the market cap is going to be about $35 billion, which means that this is a pretty decent return at that point. So with this being said, I'm still going to keep my eyes on this as this is a really interesting investment opportunity, but just wanted to give you guys this analysis so you guys can also make decisions on your own in terms of whether or not to buy, sell, or hold on to the stock. At the end of the day, you can do whatever it is you want to do. I just want to go ahead and help give you guys the perspective to make the decision. With that being said, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.